All right, it's been a while since I made an official review of one of these movies, but here I am, because I, I lost interest in doing anything else, so why not do this? Um, Kurosawa, Throne of Blood. This is actually the first time I'm, I'm seeing this movie. I, I just never got around seeing it. You know, I, oh, I've heard about the arrow scene at the end, but that was all I knew. I didn't even know that it was, you know, based on Macbeth. And, it, which is funny, because I love Kurosawa, I do. I, his work is definitely the Asian equivalent of spaghetti westerns, with maybe just a bit more patience and a bit more slower tone to it. It's not as cartoonish as, say, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, but there is a very somber, heavy atmosphere to it, and maybe because it's, you know, it does represent East Asian culture very well, maybe because of that, I relate to it more. So, you would think that I, I, I would have seen this movie, but then again, I'm only 18, so there's a very limited amount of movies that I've seen so far. Um, so yeah, all I knew about the film was the arrow scene. That's really it. And I'll just get one thing out of the way. I do think this is... I don't think this is a perfect movie. There's one major flaw to it. And I feel like it might have been intentional, but I didn't... I just Personally, I just didn't enjoy it. I think there's some trouble with the pacing. Um, there are certain scenes where certain movements just drag on for too long, certain scenes last for too long, and I'm not sure if they were just trying to emphasize the fact that they're, you know, um, adapting Macbeth, they're trying to feel more like a play than a movie, but even if that's the case, we're still watching a film. This is still in a film platform. You still need to adapt to those surroundings and that climate, and I feel like the film just didn't do, do a good job at it. There's this one particular scene that... I got so bored with and I got so tired with, even though I knew what the intention was. There's this scene where two of the main characters are riding through this fog, and they ride, they're riding on horses, by the way, and they're riding on horses through this fog for a solid fucking minute. And I get it, they're trying to emphasize this mood, mood and this atmosphere of being lost, lost, not lost, lost, and being confused and whatnot. There, it, it, maybe it, it's even trying to like symbolize the idea of being lost as a person, at, at, you know, on a soulful level, but on a spiritual, on a spiritual level, my English is getting really bad these days for some reason because I got no, nobody to talk to. Um, and maybe that was the intention. And maybe it's supposed to add something to the movie, but it just made me tired. Um, but outside of that, it is a it is pretty much a flawless movie. Um, Atmosphere-wise, there's this constant sense of somberness and weight to it. Like I said, the fog adds a lot. There's a lot of sh good work with the shadows. Basically, the lighting is amazing. Um, and there's always this sense of questionable morality in the air, which really adds to the theme, you know. And it slowly shows how it's affecting the characters as well. It affects the character arc, and it also affects the acting, which is probably more on Kurosawa's part. Um, again, the settings help. It, these are definitely extremely classic Japanese settings. You know, the busy, like the really, really, really busy forest that look like... Um, some, like, mountain spirits would live in. Um, there's a lot of heavy rain. Uh, and really authentic war equipment. Not just, like, the simple samurai hairstyles and whatnot and the robe. No, there's just some... There's some legitimately authentic war equipment in this movie. Even though it might look stupid, that's what we looked like back in um, all the Asian wars of the... of the. I don't know when this movie set in, but most of the wars that I know of come from the 15th century. There was definitely this big war in the 16th century between Korea and Japan, um, and obviously um, we were colonized afterwards, but that doesn't really matter. That's not what I'm talking about here. So yeah, the war equipment is extremely authentic. And like I said, it all of that really... You can see how all of that affects the characters. It's very tangible. The wife, who I know is an extremely famous actress, I know she's been in like a bunch of Kurosawa movies. She's worked with she's worked with Mizoguchi. I know it. I just cannot remember her name, but she not she's really good in this movie. And there's that one really iconic scene where she's talking about how the blood, the smell of blood, is not washing off of her hands, which is a very haunting scene. But the reason I really like her acting is really. Mo it really comes down to Kurosawa's work. It's shot... Why is my hair going that way? Fuck! Um, it's shot beautifully. 
like she's shot beautifully. There's this constant sense of omin there's an ominous tone to her. There's a sense of doom that surrounds her from the beginning. And as she goes on and as she starts as she starts to lose her mind and whatnot, you can feel the contrast. You can see, you can feel the contrast from her in the beginning and her her in with her in her last scene with the blood wa blood not washing off washing off her hands stuff. You know, the, you can feel, suddenly f feel the contrast between the desperation and the fear in the last scene and the sh the strange ominous confidence she had in the f in the beginning. And of course. Again, cannot remember the guy's name, the main character of the film. I cannot, I think the main character's name is Washizu, but um, I can't, I cannot remember the actor's name. I know he's, he's amazing. I've seen him, I've, I've seen him in a lot of movies. I've seen him in Rashomon. He's one of the best actors that I've ever seen. And he really just might be Kurosawa's, Kurosawa's greatest weapon. And here, he just fucking nails it. His you know his wide, wild, passionate eyes, the passionate, gruff voice, the 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 um the flaring nose, the animated movements. You know, but there's he's just poised enough, and he's calm enough to emphasize the weight of the character's guilt and how it drives him to madness. Um, and again, it's and there are there are these amazing shots emphasizing that character arc. Not it's not simply emphasized through his acting. There's this great shot of him where we see him through the crack of the door, crack in the door, and it really emphasizes his solitude and how he's lonely and how he's alone and how how he's really he's not going to be saved from this guilt that he's kind of driven into. Um, also, th there's one thing about this film that really stands out compared to the other Kur Kurosawa movies. This, because he Kurosawa has always been a director who always had both of his feet in reality. Most of his films are extremely authentic and realistic, and he, I, I feel like he always tries to do that. Um, even the films like Rashomon, Ran, um, Kagemusha, Ikiru, all those movies kind of has this great sense of reality to it. With this film, he's actually trying to go for more of a, you know, fantasy folklore, um, uh, he's adding a folklore element to it. There's, there's this character who's kind of this mountain spirit, and it really just adds this cultural mysticism that does surround Japan, at least, um, at least the really, um, old-time traditional image of Japan. Um, it adds a spiritual level, layer to the film, which also adds to the characters. Um, it really is a character piece, like most Shakespeare stories, I guess. Um, the ending is insanely poetic in how it's so humorous. It is kind of a funny scene if you think about it. I'm not going to spoil it to you, because it, it kind of is a surprise. Um, but what, the reason I like how poetically humorous it is is because it effectively contrasts with one of the most cartoonish character deaths I have ever seen. The arrow scene is amazing, but when you see it in the context of the film, it's much better. It's, if you just see the scene alone, it's still amazing. You know, all those arrows and the scene where the the, fi the one final arrow going through his neck, it is an amazing scene. But when you just see, you know, when you feel how it contrasts with this poetic scene that comes before it, it's so good. It's so much better. Um, like I said, the pacing, that's the one thing that I have a problem with. And maybe, I do, I do emphasize the pacing a lot when it, when I come to, when I, when it comes down to how I rate movies. So, here's the thing. It's not a 4 out of 4. It's more of a 3.5. But still, it's, it's a great Kurosawa movie. And if you don't mind the pacing too much, because I do a lot, you're gonna love this movie. It's really good. So, Go and watch it, especially if you're a Kurosawa fan. If you like Yojimbo or whatnot, just go and see it. Um, yeah, pirate this shit or whatever. Throw in the blood. Three point five out of four. Bye.